just try this for three or four days doctor? and if it, uh, try this for three or four days and if it doesn't clear up we'll give you something stronger uh, doctor sorry to try it for three yes, or yes I, I know doctor i know I, I was wondering if you could come and look at mrs skilton's foot again oh yes. you see Hello? It's been giving her a lot of trouble with all the housework. Yeah, could you speak up a bit, please? It's been giving her a lot of trouble with all the... Oh, uh, sorry. That's all right. So, sorry. Uh, sorry? That's all right. Uh, sorry. Oh, uh, my fault. <laughs> yes. Well, this evening? Yes, I'll try, but it may be rather late. Well, because I've got a lot of other calls to make. Fine. Bye. Yes, I'll... I'll try to get in tomorrow. Oh, uh, thank you, Doctor. Good evening. Good evening. Oh, you must be Dr. Upton. That's right. Yes. You're so like your father, I'd recognize you anywhere. Uh, do sit down. We met him when we were with the Rotarians in Brighton last year. My little girl Cynthia was rather ill. She's rather delicate, you know. And he looked after her wonderfully. Good, good. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I'm Sobolaski. How are you doing? <laughs> Are you sure you're looking after yourself? You look awfully tired. <laughs> Can't you get someone in here to help you? Well, I, I just... Now, think... I'm not going to keep you a moment. In fact, I hardly like bothering you at all. But Cynthia seems so lethargic this morning, so naturally I put her to bed. But I thought possibly there was some little tonic you could recommend. Well, yes. Now, I don't want you to bother yourself. Just write that down, dear. Iron pills, anyway, perhaps. Yeah, of course. Are you sure you're getting enough sleep? Yes, yes. And are you eating proper meals? Yes. Well, when you have some free time, you must come over and have dinner with us. Well, thank you. That's <laughs> very kind. There's the, um... Thank you. Now, sit down. Sit down. I shall see myself out. <laughs> and don't forget, try to get someone in here to help you. Bye-bye. <laughs> oh, good evening, Dr. Griffin. Good evening, Mrs. Asker. <clears throat> Dreadful old bat. Really? <laughs> she's a bit overpowering. A bit. She's two panzer divisions and an Easter bonnet. <laughs> she used to waste more of my time than four of my other patients put together, till I told her so. Since when? <laughs> oh, gracious me, I really mustn't talk so much, you know. I feel my throat coming back again, oh dear. Oh, I, I'm sorry about that. I was thinking it's still a bit hectic here with the flu. I, I was wondering... A receptionist. Oh, yes. And I was oh. thinking of that only yesterday. A nice, bright, efficient girl would be a real investment. Or even just, just while the epidemic's on, perhaps you might get Paul to, to come and help us out for a couple of weeks with the actual medicine. Paul? Now, that's very thoughtful of you, Michael. It would make a bit of a break for me. Oh, well, I was thinking, actually... Of... Good idea. Ring him up. <laughs> uh... Dr. Griffin! How for you, Liv? That's very thoughtful. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I've just been to see Mrs. Baxter. Doctor. She's much better. Have you got a moment, Doctor? Oh, hello, Mrs. Askey. Um, yes. Honey, I'd love you to meet my little girl, Cynthia. Ah, uh, hello. She's been just dying to meet you, haven't you, Cynthia, darling? No. Oh, yes, she has. <laughs> she's such a tease. You never know what she's going to say next, do you, darling? Of course I know what I'm going to say next, Mother. You do love me, Doctor. She's at it all the time. Well, sometimes I say to my husband, George, I say, if she pulls my leg just once more, I say, well, Cynthia, tell Dr. Upton what I say. What? Tell Dr. Upton what I say. Well, I don't know what you say, Mother. Yes, of course you do, dear. What do I always say to your father? Where have you been tonight, George? Cynthia! <laughs> <laughs> oh, she's naughty, isn't she? I don't know how she makes it up. <laughs> Only, I wouldn't want you to think anything like that about my husband. <laughs> if anything, he's the jealous one of the family. <laughs> Not that I give him calls, of course. Oh. <laughs> oh, George, this is Dr. Upton. Oh, yes? Um, how do you do, Mr. Askey? Been having a nice little chat with my wife, Doctor? Uh, yes, yes. I'll be in the car. <laughs> He's a little bit on edge today. He used to do some boxing, you know, and sometimes his head hurts. <laughs> well, say goodbye to Dr. Upton, Cynthia, darling. Goodbye to Dr. Upton. Uh, 
about. She is very satirical for her age, isn't she, Doctor? Mother! <laughs> well, I'll be seeing you again very soon, Michael. Yes, sir. Uh, hope so. <laughs> Goodbye. Come along, Cynthia, darling. <laughs> I'm so sorry to have bothered you. No, no, not at all. Only Cynthia wasn't feeling at all well this morning. I really think you ought to have a look at her. Yes, of course. And this way, Michael. You don't mind me calling you Michael on your professional visits? No, no. Oh, good. <laughs> this way. She's being so brave, poor dear, even though she is feeling so ill. <laughs> Cynthia! Dr. Upton's here to see you, dear. Turn the radio off. Let's go, girl. Now let Mummy make your pillows nice and comfy. There. Well, now, Cynthia, what seems to be the trouble? Well, she's been having one of her feverish bouts, Michael. She wasn't her merry self this morning, so I took her temperature. 99.6 off to bed, you go at once, darling, I say, and we'll call Dr. Upton. Uh, I see. Any other symptoms, Cynthia? Cynthia, stop reading, dear. Dr. Upton is asking you a question. <laughs> well... She has a pain in her head just about here and a sort of buzzing in her ears. You haven't got a sore throat? No, no, no. <laughs> has this ever happened before? Yes, yeah, she has this about every six weeks, Michael. She's very delicate, you know. I'm not. Yes, you are, darling. Mother knows. No, she doesn't. Oh, you are a little tease. she still has a delicious sense of humour. <laughs> well, well, there's nothing actually physically wrong with her. I mean, she's no real temperature. No, Michael, but she does get a little bit listless sometimes. May I ask, does she have any boyfriends? No, Michael, no. Well, I was just wondering. Well, yes, of course, Michael. <laughs> of course. Well, I'll um, try to pop in again tomorrow, Mrs. Askey. Oh, thank you so much, Michael. And do call me Sybil. Oh, right. And I may call you if anything happens. Yes, yes, of course. Oh, well, it was nice to see you again, Michael. Nice to have met you. <laughs> bye bye, Sybil. Ah, good evening, Mr. Askey. Uh, Dr. Upton has just been visiting Cynthia, dear. Oh, uh, yes? Sybil? Yes, she's um, got a temperature. Well, no, she hasn't got a temperature, but she's not well. Well, well she's not ill. Um, I was just visiting. You see? Well, I'll be off then. See you tomorrow. Yeah. What? Uh, and you. Uh, see both of you tomorrow. Or rather, see Cynthia tomorrow and probably both of you. Fine. Well, <laughs> bye bye. <laughs> All right, Sybil. What are you up to? Nothing, George. Nothing. I'm so sorry to call you out at this time of night. No, yes, it's all right. Oh, you're looking awfully tired. You're not getting enough sleep. I know. You must think it terrible of me bothering you like no, this. No, really. Only poor Cynthia's been in and out of the bathroom all night. And you think it's food poisoning? Well, I think it must be. This way, dear, you'll have to be rather quiet, because George is a very light sleeper. Cynthia! Cynthia? Cynthia! Cynthia, darling, Dr. Upton is here to see you. Yeah. Dr. Upton is here to see you. Who? Dr. Upton. What the hell's he doing here? Cynthia! <laughs> it's three o'clock in the morning. Oh, 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 she's a little bit sleepy, Michael. <laughs> You're ill, dear. Food poisoning, remember? Food poisoning? Yes, you've been in and out of the bathroom all night. I went twice. Once for a pee and once to put a eye out of my eye. I told you. Yes, but you looked very ill, dear. I told you I wasn't ill. I am not ill, Mother, I said. But you've been going to the bathroom. Look, it's a free country, isn't it? Can't I even spend a penny without someone calling an ambulance? You've got food poisoning. Yes, and smallpox and VD and the bubonic plague, and I want to die in my sleep. Oh, Cynthia, I'm warning you. Sit up, can't, rigor mortis. <laughs> What's going on along there? Uh, 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 nothing, dear. Who are you talking to? Uh, nobody.
Pretty dear. Well, I think Cynthia seems to be perfectly all right, so I'd better go. Well, she does seem to have made a rather rapid recovery, in my opinion. She's a very naughty girl. No, no, it's probably just... What are you doing here at this time of night? Oh, uh, Dr. Upton has just been examining Cynthia, dear. With the light off? Um, well... Uh... He's fast asleep. What have you been doing in there? I was called here to examine Cynthia, and I find that she is perfectly well. I am now going back to bed, Mr. Askey. Good night, Mrs. Askey. Good night. If I catch him with you again, I'll wring his scrawny little neck. <laughs> The symptoms were she'd been to the bathroom twice. Oh, come yes. on. It's true. <laughs> Mrs. Askey is quite clearly a vicarious hypochondriac. <laughs> oh, really? I mean, there's nothing actually wrong with the girl, is there, Michael? Nothing that a missing mother wouldn't cure. Diagnosis, Mrs. Askey stifling the life out of her daughter. Treatment, tell her. Oh, yeah. Well, I would, like a shot. But she never goes out of the house. Never. No boyfriends? You're joking. Oh, well, look, Michael, next time, bring it up tactfully, tell the old trout that Cynthia needs a boyfriend. Oh, she'll like that. Well, you've got to do something, Mike. I know. Well, she's going to get married someday. She may as well get used to the idea. Yes, but giving that sort of advice, I, I always feel a bit young, you know. You wouldn't say something. No, Michael, no. She's your patient. Besides, I feel my throat again, really. I did <laughs> Now, look here, what you ought to do is to go straight round now and have it out with her. What? That's your answer. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Michael, what a pleasant surprise. Good afternoon. Have you called to see Cynthia? Um, well, no, I've come to see you, actually. Oh, well, there's nothing the matter with me, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Do come in and sit down. Cynthia's so much better today. Really? Oh, yes, she's a different girl since she's been seeing you. Good, good. <clears throat> well, um, Mrs. Sybil, um, I, I wondered if I might have a sort of um, serious chat with you. Oh, of course, Michael, of course. Good. I, I hope you won't think me too forward. Oh, please, Michael. Nothing of the kind. Only, you may feel that I'm a bit young, um, inexperienced. Oh, now, 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 Michael, you mustn't be embarrassed. I think I know what's on your mind. You do? Yes. And they say the younger generation has no time for the old-fashioned courtesies. Do they? <laughs> Would you like me to call my husband in? Uh, no, no, I, I, I don't think that'll be necessary. Oh, Michael, I'm so glad you said that. I know we're going to get along very well together. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. Do go on. Yes, well, um, thank you. Well, but to be perfectly frank, I, I think Cynthia needs a steady boyfriend. Oh, yes, Michael, yes! Yes? Yes. Well, to spend some time with. And if everything works out, she should get married and settle down. Oh, after... Michael! I'm so happy for you both! <laughs> oh, as soon as I saw you, I knew you were the one! <laughs> Understand. Ah, yes. Oh, George, I have something to tell you. Uh, no, 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 It's sure. hardly necessary to tell me now, is it? I walk in and find the two of you. No, no, you didn't. Don't you dare say I didn't. Oh, but not that. George, I have some wonderful news. No, no, wonderful? she hasn't. No, 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 she hasn't had any news at all. Absolutely no wonderful news of any kind whatsoever. Oh, Michael, don't be silly. Of course it's wonderful. Wonderful, she calls it, after all these years. George, since. <laughs> and Michael are engaged. <laughs> what? Him and not... Not what? No, they're engaged. No, we are not. We are not oh, engaged. Well, no, 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 not officially. Uh, no, not at all. No, not, not at all. No, I was just trying to explain to you that Cynthia needed a steady boyfriend. What? A boyfriend. Any boyfriend. But you said married. Yeah, but not me. Uh... Wait a moment, wait a moment. 
Albert has he got Cynthia into trouble? Yes, Cynthia. And now he won't marry her, eh? Oh, look, I know sense. how the deal with your son. What? Oh, um, I, I understand everything now. You do? Yes, I, I was trying to rush things, jump the gun, when all you needed was time. Um, well, not exactly. Oh, I'm so sorry. Anyway, I, I made a fool of myself. Oh, no, not at all. We will see you again. Yes, 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 of course. Oh. Um, bye-bye, Sybil. I'll call you sometime. Sybil, yes. I wonder... Oh, would... sit down, George. <laughs> oh, Michael, I'm sitting... Oh, I'm sorry. Hello, I'm Dr Collier. Oh. Yes, Dr Upton sends his apologies, but he's so busy this afternoon, he asked me to answer your call as I'm in the area. Oh, I see. Yeah. Well, what's the matter with old Cynthia today, then? Cowpox? <laughs> as a matter of fact, she complained of rather severe pains in her stomach. I thought she might have appendicitis. Oh, appendicitis. Well, lucky I brought my penknife. What? Huh. <laughs> What's up, butchers, then? I beg your pardon. Where's the crumpet? Crumpet? <laughs> a little bit of stuff. Um, are you sure you're Dr Upton's assistant? Well, no, not really, uh, Mrs. Askey, but I pay Dr. Upson ten bob an hour to let me examine the girls now and then. <laughs> what? Uh, only joking, Arthur. Uh, this way? Oh, yes. Um, Cynthia is rather delicate. Don't worry, I've got warm hands. Yes. Uh, Cynthia, the doctor's here, dear. She's also a little bit stubborn at times. <laughs> Hello. Hello there. Turn the radio off, dear. Turn the radio off, dear. Good afternoon, Miss Asky. Good afternoon. Now then, what's all this about tummy pains, eh? Well, she woke up this morning feeling very queasy. She hardly touched her breakfast, so of course I sent her to bed. And then she started complaining of pains in her stomach here. Here. Here! <laughs> oh, hello, Mrs Asky. Oh. Uh, does it hurt now? No. Not a bit? No. Well, a bit, yes. Uh, where does it hurt? We're sort of there. Here? <laughs> Here? Oh, yes, yes, that hurts. Here? Oh, definitely. I see. Um... Uh, and a bit higher. Oh! <laughs> Cynthia, you're imagining things, dear. Oh, I'm not, Mother, I'm delicate. Oh, of course you're not. Delicate. I've never heard such rubbish. Uh, here? Um, Just a bit. Uh, higher. Uh, uh, no, ah, uh, there. Oh, yes. Oh, that hurts a lot. Ooh, um, oh, oh. <laughs> You know Paul's got to go back to St Swithin's on Friday. You mean he can't help us out anymore? Unfortunately not. So it's back to the grindstone for us. <gasps> <gasps> you know, Michael, I do think we ought to consider that question of a receptionist. Yes. It would make work lighter for me. Well, I well, well ah, I saw yes. her. Paul, how was it? Fun. What happened? Well, Mrs. Asky took an instant dislike to me, and from then on, things went rapidly downhill. Oh, oh. Yes, I gave her a touch of Max Miller, a bit of Dr. Kildare, and then into the living room for 30 seconds of World War II. <laughs> you put the boot in. They'll have to operate to get it out. <laughs> yes. I think if Mrs. Asky doesn't realise she's stifling Cynthia now, she never will. Well, she never will. <laughs> well, she might. Here's to Cynthia. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think I'd better have one of these. <laughs> How is Cynthia? Hmm? Oh, fine, fine. I, I thought she was rather sweet. Uh, in fact, quite, um, well, uh, oh. uh, Hello? Yes? Uh, yes, yes, I'll just see if any of the doctors are here. It's Mrs. Askey. Oh, Michael, you uh, take it. <clears throat> uh, yes, Mrs. Askey? Uh, pardon? Uh, not Dr. Collier. Yes, I see. Uh, she wants to speak to either of you two. Oh, well, well I've got to fetch the, uh, uh, the, uh, um, I've got to, yes. Uh, <laughs> hello, Mrs. Askey? Yes, uh, Dr. Upton's here. Yes, yes, he's longing to speak to you no, too. No. Yes, yes, here he is now. Oh. Hello. 
Hello, Mrs. Askey. Oh, dear, has she? Oh, well, I'll come straight over then. No, no, not at all. Bye-bye, Mrs. Askey. <laughs> Michael, what am I going to do? Cynthia, gone! Just packed her bags and left. She'll be absolutely helpless without me. I did everything for her. Yes, look, just take one of these and you'll soon feel better. Yes. There we are. Now, tell me all about it. Well, she was pretending to be ill again. And then she started shouting and screaming terrible things. And, oh, my God! Oh, um, no, 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 no. This is just... No, 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 she won't. No. Excuse me. I'm sorry. Um, you see, Cynthia's left home and Mrs. Left Askey home. was a bit distraught and needed comforting. I see. don't mind, Doctor. What? I don't mind, Doctor. It doesn't seem important anymore. It's quite natural for my wife to be attracted to younger men, but, but please don't take her away from me. Take her? No, I no. don't mind Cynthia going to live with you. Cynthia? Please. That's all right. I don't mind. Really, I don't. I but don't mind about not. her. But please leave me, Sybil. You've done a lot of damage, but I don't mind if you'll just go now. I won't make any trouble, but please um, go. Look, uh, please go. Please listen. Please um, Go. I'll give you money. Uh, look. Fifteen, eighteen pounds oh, no, no, no. and lots of silver. <laughs> All right, send a check. Anything you want, but take my watch. <laughs> and uh, here's our best picture you all like there. <laughs> and my German umbrella, there it's yours. And my Tyrolean hat. Now, please, go. And, uh, Doctor, cross us off your list if you'll be so kind. Thank you so much. Goodbye. <laughs> oh, Sybil. Yes, George. And of course, it's a very sound idea to gargle with warm salt water. With what? Warm salt water. Oh, yes, yes. Well, why don't you do that, then? Then you can keep taking the myosin tablets. Good idea. Good idea. Well, I'll do that, then. Yeah, and try and cut down on the cigarettes. Oh, I know I should. It's all the work, you know. Mm. Uh, Dr. Griffin, the Askins are no longer our patients. Shh. What? Oh. We've lost the Askins. Oh, well done, Michael. Well done. I hoped it might come to this. Well done. Where's Paul? I, I want in to there. Me. I'll be with you in a moment. Thank you, Mr. Skilton, for your help. Thank you. Come along. Okay. Paul! Uh, yes, Mike. Uh, uh, won't be a minute. Uh, just a sec. Hello, Mike. Listen, we've lost the Askies. Oh, good. Good? What do you mean? It's great. We're rid of the whole family. Yes. Um, Mike, we've got a receptionist. Have we? <laughs> That'll help. Yes, I've just been showing her one or two things. Yeah, I bet you have. Oh, no! Oh, yes.
try this for three or four days doctor? and... If it... uh, try this for three or four days and if it doesn't clear up, we'll give you something stronger. Uh, doctor, sorry to... Try it for three yes, or... Yes, I, I know, Doctor, I know. I, I was wondering if you could come and look at Mrs. Skilton's foot again. Oh, yes. you see... Hello? It's been giving her a lot of trouble with all the housework. Yeah, could you speak up a bit, please? It's been giving her a lot of trouble with all the... Oh, uh, sorry. That's all right. So, sorry. Uh, sorry? That's all right. Uh, sorry. Oh, uh, my fault. <laughs> yes. Well, this evening? Yes, I'll try, but it may be rather late. Well, because I've got a lot of other calls to make. Fine. Bye. Yes, I'll... I'll try to get in tomorrow. Oh, uh, thank you, Doctor. Good evening. Good evening. Oh, you must be Dr. Upton. That's right. Yes. You're so like your father, I'd recognize you anywhere. Uh -huh. Do sit down. <laughs> we met him when we were with the Rotarians in Brighton last year. My little girl Cynthia was rather ill. She's rather delicate, you know. And he looked after her wonderfully. Good, good. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I'm Sobolowski. How do you do? <laughs> Are you sure you're looking after yourself? You look awfully tired. <laughs> Can't you get someone in here to help you? Well, I, I just... Now, think... I'm not going to keep you a moment. In fact, I hardly like bothering you at all. But Cynthia seems so lethargic this morning, so naturally I put her to bed. But I thought possibly there was some little tonic you could recommend. Well, yes. Now, I don't want you to bother yourself. Just write that down, dear. Iron pills, anyway, perhaps. Yes, of course. Are you sure you're getting enough sleep? Yes, yes. And are you eating proper meals? Yes. Well, when you have some free time, you must come over and have dinner with us. Well, thank you. That's <laughs> very kind. There's the, um... Thank you. Now, sit down. Sit down. I shall see myself out. <laughs> and don't forget, try to get someone in here to help you. Bye-bye. <laughs> oh, good evening, Dr. Griffin. Good evening, Mrs. Astor. <clears throat> Dreadful old bat. Really? <laughs> She's a bit overpowering. A bit. She's two panzer divisions and an Easter bonnet. <laughs> she used to waste more of my time than four of my other patients put together, till I told her so. Since when? <laughs> oh, gracious me, I really mustn't talk so much, you know. I feel my throat coming back again, oh dear. Oh, I, I'm sorry about that. I was thinking it's still a bit hectic here with the flu. I, I was wondering... A receptionist. Oh, yes. Well, I was oh. thinking of that only yesterday. A nice, bright, efficient girl would be a real investment. Or even just, just while the epidemic's on, perhaps you might get Paul to, to come and help us out for a couple of weeks with the actual medicine. Paul? Now, that's very thoughtful of you, Michael. It would make a bit of a break for me. Oh, well, I was thinking, actually... Of... Good idea. Ring him up. <laughs> uh... Dr. Griffin! Half of your lift. That's very thoughtful. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I've just been to see Mrs. Baxter. Doctor, She's Doctor. much better. Have you got a moment, Doctor? Oh, hello, Mrs. Askey. Um, yes. Honey, I'd love you to meet my little girl, Cynthia. Ah, hello. She's been just dying to meet you, haven't you, Cynthia, darling? No. Oh, yes, she has. <laughs> she's such a tease. You never know what she's going to say next, do you, darling? Of course I know what I'm going to say next, Mother. You do love me, Doctor. She said it all the time. Well, sometimes I say to my husband, George, I say, if she pulls my leg just once more, I say, well, Cynthia, tell Dr. Upton what I say. What? Tell Dr. Upton what I say. I don't know what you say, Mother. Yes, of course you do, dear. What do I always say to your father? Where have you been tonight, George? Cynthia! <laughs> <laughs> oh, she's naughty, isn't she? I don't know how she makes it up. <laughs> Only, I wouldn't want you to think anything like that about my husband. <laughs> if anything, he's the jealous one of the family. <laughs> Not that I give him calls, of course. <laughs> oh, George, this is Dr. Upton. Oh, yes? Um, how do you do, Mr. Askey? Been having a nice little chat with my wife, Doctor? Yes, yes. I'll be in the car. Uh, he's a little bit on edge today. He used to do some boxing, you know, and sometimes his head hurts. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, say goodbye to Dr. Upton, Cynthia, darling. Goodbye to Dr. Upton. Uh, 
about. She is very hysterical for her age, isn't she, Doctor? Mother! <laughs> well, I'll be seeing you again very soon, Michael. Yes, sir. Uh, hope so. <laughs> Goodbye. Come along, Cynthia, darling. <laughs> I'm so sorry to have bothered you. No, no, not at all. Only Cynthia wasn't feeling at all well this morning. I really think you ought to have a look at her. Yes, of course. And this way, Michael. You don't mind me calling you Michael on your professional visits? No, no. Oh, good. <laughs> this way. She's being so brave, poor dear, even though she is feeling so ill. Cynthia! Dr. Upton's here to see you, dear. Turn the radio off. That's good girl. Now let Mummy make your pillows nice and comfy. There. Well, now, Cynthia, what seems to be the trouble? Well, she's been having one of her feverish bouts, Michael. She wasn't her merry self this morning, so I took her temperature. 99.6 off to bed, you go at once, darling, I say. And we'll call Dr. Upton. Uh, I see. Any other symptoms, Cynthia? Cynthia, stop reading, dear. Dr. Upton is asking you a question. <laughs> well... She has a pain in her head just about here and a sort of buzzing in her ears. You haven't got a sore throat? No, no, no. <laughs> has this ever happened before? Yes, yeah, she has this about every six weeks, Michael. She's very delicate, you know. I'm not. Yes, you are, darling. Mother knows. No, she doesn't. Oh, you are a little tease. She's ill. She still has a delicious sense of 